please tell the crowd about yourself. Hold on, I gotta... Okay, we got this. <laughs> Do I need to... Um, hi, everybody. Boy, I gotta tell you, I already can't... This is my first thing this morning, and, um, and I came in from the West Coast, so it feels like it's super early. I already can't find the things I'm allowed to say that Nickelodeon sent me, so this is going to be gangbusters. Yeah. <laughs> what could possibly else go wrong? <laughs> um, oh, you're asking me a question. What's happening? Oh, no, not cool. I'll I'm open asking the floor. these guys I'll questions. open the floor. Uh, floor please open. introduce yourselves one at a time. Right there. Yeah. Uh, David Gansel, GeekVision.tv. Hey, um, David. Hello. Outside of Cora, you're mostly known for your comedy work, uh, SF Sketchfest, Rip Tracks, Neil's Puff Dreams. You've, oh. you've done a lot of really awesome projects. Thank um, you. On the other hand, your podcast, it still has a sense of humor, but it's a much more uh, serious and personal endeavor. What, what was it that inspired you to start the JV Club? Um, thank you so much for bringing up the, the podcast. Um, I mean, if you listen to it, you know it's like a, has a, definitely has a special place in my heart. Maybe in part because of everything you just mentioned. It's I'm so lucky to, to be a part of this kind of amazing comedy community that stretches outside of LA, out into you know New York and, and San Francisco, the, the festival that I founded and produced. But um, you know, a lot of comedy. Uh, it, it, there's just a lot of snark in comedy, and I have no problem with that whatsoever. But I also feel like I'm so lucky to know the kind of human soft side of so many funny people, not just, you know, comedians, but actors and actresses and writers and, um, and I'm just always interested in kind of finding out, uh, like, what are, what all of our vulnerabilities are and, um, finding the humor in that and I think that, um, one of the coolest things about social media now and about the kind of accessibility, and it's also one of the trickiest things for people who are kind of in the spotlight, um, because of that, access, you know, that self-same uh, accessibility, is that you sort of get the chance to feel like you really know someone whose work you admire. And like I said, that can be good and bad. Um, but you know, if you're gonna uh, read an article about how someone stole Christina Hendricks' phone and maybe or maybe not her boobs uh, are featured, like why not also find out what kind of a person she is and kind of find out how what makes her so wonderful and who she was when she was growing up and uh, and how she got to where she is because I think that ultimately the gift in the accessibility is that everyone should understand that we're all the same and. Um, that's my favorite thing about it is like, hey, hey person that you know feels completely alone and like you just moved to a new place and you don't know anyone. This person that you might think is amazingly talented and like was always just kind of together also moved someplace and was terrified and didn't know what to do about it and you know kind of worked through that. So that's that's sort of you know it's it's kind of ovary, but uh, but it's just well, that's one of my favorite things um, going on in my career right now. So thanks for asking about it. Awesome. I'll give 10 minute answers for every single question. Back there. Dan Warren from GuysNation.com. Hey, Dan. Um, you were on Entourage. Yeah, I was. Great show. I didn't even have to take off my clothes either. That was like a real plus. <laughs> How did you have a, a role? That, you know, a real definite reoccurring role on a very popular TV series. How did it feel to get that? How did you get it? I mean, how did you stumble upon it? Was it. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I auditioned for it. I, it, it the cool thing about Entourage was, and I think I can say this about probably, I mean, if it happened like this for me, it probably happened like this for other people who ended up doing that show, which was, um, I auditioned for like the pilot before it was even picked up as a series. And, um, and I can't remember, I think I might have read for like Ari's assistant, or there was just some part that I read for. And, uh, and while that was not, you know, the, the role for me, um, they were real cool about, like, they just kept bringing in people that they liked over the seasons, and um, and they would just say, like, the producers would say, like, don't worry, we're going to find something for you. And I think that, um, you know, Hollywood kind of trains you to be jaded because a lot of stuff doesn't work out. And, uh, and so I kind of just, like, kept going in, and I remember I would read for, sometimes I would come in and I would just read for, like, the girl working at the Apple store, and I would have, like, two lines, and... Then I even wouldn't get that, and I was like, hmm, oh, jeez. Um, and then it turned out like they kind of just were saving, you know, they, they had this cool thing that they wanted me to come back and do more than once. So it, it, in the long run, it turned out to be worth the wait. 
Um, but yeah, it's it's that's a it's a tough business. So when someone says like we're just trying to find the right thing for you, you're like uh huh, and then sometimes it actually turns out to be true. Uh, Farrell from WHUS. I was wondering if you find a lot of similarities between your characters' personalities and your own. Um, great question. I assume you're talking about Bora. Um, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, as yet, have not discovered that I have the ability to bend any elements. Um, I'm always ready. Every morning I wake up and think, this could be the day. Um, but, um, but I think, you know, I've said this before, but I think that one of the reasons that I ended up getting the part, um, I wish I could say that it was all of Cora's good qualities, but I think that, um, when I was auditioning for it, I, I feel like my kind of like the sarcasm and the kind of like bullheadedness that I brought to the character might have been uh, one of the things that pushed me over the top. But um, I think that's one of the cool things about Gora is that she's complicated and that she kind of can drive you crazy. Um, I don't want to see. I'm not of the mind of like I love superheroes who are flawless. I'm definitely more along the you know I I, I lean heavily towards. They're just like us, but they're also burdened with this extraordinary responsibility. And so that's one of the things I love about her. So I think hopefully like my flaws and my humanity um, are what got me the role. And, uh, and in those ways, I feel like there's some similarities. Yeah, great question. Saw your hand. Yeah. How you doing? Alice Fraz at WHS Radio. Hey, Alice. Yeah. Um, I had a question. Basically, uh, when you're doing this show, um, when you first got cast, were you aware of the Avatar franchise? Did you know just how big a deal it was, how big the fan community was? Any experience with that? You know, I certainly was familiar with the show, and I definitely was a fan. Um, I hadn't, I didn't, I do, because I wasn't really aware of a kind of the online community, and I wasn't that familiar with cons at that point. I mean, I was, but I had never gone to one. Um, I didn't really know. So I, I knew that, I mean, I knew that it was an extraordinary, franchise, if you will, and I was a huge fan of Mike and Brian's, but, um, but when I got the part, I remember Sarah, the great Sarah Noonan, who works in casting at Nickelodeon, who's just the most wonderful person, um, I ran into her, at, like, maybe my second or third recording, and she kind of, like, pulled me aside into a corner, and she was like, are you ready for this? And I was like, I don't know, what, what? yeah, I mean, sure, and she was like, no. Like, do you know? Do you get it? And I was like, I think so. And then the buzz started when it was getting ready for the series to begin, and I was like, oh crap, I like, I, I hope people like me, this is really scary. Suddenly it became like very real. Um, and that's kind of an interesting thing about um, what I am fortunate enough to do, and I think what a lot of um, voice actors and on-screen actors would say as well, which is, um, you know, I just, I've just finished doing this um, role on this uh, FX show called You're the Worst, and it's on camera, and it's premiering on July 17th. And we have been shooting for months, and you just live in this little vacuum, you know, you just live in this little world where you're like, hey, we're all making a thing! And then suddenly it goes out into the world, and it becomes something completely different, and you have to kind of break out of that little bubble that you've been living in. And so that's kind of what happened with Cora. But luckily, it turned out to be like the best experience of my life. So. Um, that one turned out all right. <laughs> Any other questions? What's your name? Anna. Hey, Anna. Hey. Um, since Cora has become so large, and it, since season two started, it basically exploded again. How does it feel like seeing cosplayers as Cora? Would you consider cosplaying yourself? <laughs> uh, it's the best. Um, that's one of my favorite things, uh, it's one of the reasons that I do cons, is that I just, um, it means so much. Speaking, uh, as it was Alex, about kind of how, how it grows out of this tiny thing that you're just doing in this room with all the people who are involved with it, and then it grows to the community of people who watch it. To me, that's like another way of growing it even further, which is to get the opportunity to come and interact with people who like the show and people who cosplay. Um, at pretty much every time I see anyone dressed as Korra or anyone from the, even if it's Aang or you know Azula, it doesn't matter. I just get so excited. I have to take a picture and I try to like tweet and post that stuff because 
Um, it's an element of what I do, pun intended, I guess. Um, it's an element of what I do that, that really enriches the whole experience and the whole like kind of avatar universe. So I love it. I'm always so excited. I, I'm always so interested in like the little tweaks that people make and like, you know, what they make by hand or who they're having make it for them, all that stuff. I just love it. Yeah. Back to that again first. Hi, Dan from BadStation.com. Um, I always wanted to ask somebody this question. The state of female comedy. Yeah, yeah. How, how different is it now from when you first started? Um, that's a great question. I, you know, I definitely think uh, it's better. Um, I think, uh, you know, even with setbacks, like, you know, certain celebrities saying that women aren't funny, um, uh, certainly it's better. You know, every time you see, um, something like Bridesmaids, you know, that's a really kind of, now that's sort of an old example, which is so cool. But anything like that where everybody kind of gets the wake up call like, oh yeah, people will buy tickets to go see a bunch of women being awesome, um, is, is a huge, huge boon for us. The thing that is a little risky about it is that um, sometimes what ends up happening, and I didn't see it that much with this kind of wave, which is great, but sometimes what ends up happening is, um, networks who don't have necessarily a lot of imagination, and it's a really tough job, you know, it's like there's so much money in show business, and sometimes the creative parts of us forget that. You're just like, why can't I just make something good? Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't trade places with a, like an executive for the world, because it's so much pressure. But you see the sort of like, it's almost like there's a backlash of like, they're just, they'll just put anything on that's a bunch of girls, and then there's like not so great stuff, and then no one thinks women are funny anymore. Um, and I'm glad to say that I feel like this wave has really just been this like increasing, like upping the stakes, but also upping the quality, and like, I think that there's so much great stuff out there now. And one of the cool things about, again, about social media and about the internet is that, um, and Greg Barron just said this on my podcast, it's, it's an, it's, it's an equal opportunity environment, you know? You don't have to have, you can be hilarious on YouTube, you can be hilarious on Twitter, and no executive, nobody is gonna say like, sorry, we're shutting your voice down. And I think that is, like, we're so lucky, and anybody who wants to get out there and be heard and seen has the opportunity, and like, thank God for that, you know? Sorry, Ann. Uh, Ink from Anagamers.com. Hey. Uh, Legend of Core is written exclusively by females, I believe. Uh, Legend of Core is written exclusively by females? Three males. Oh, three males. Yeah. No, actually, there is, there's definitely um, at least one female writer. I don't see the writers as often, because um, they're not necessarily in the room when I'm recording, because Mike and Brian are, but, um, but we definitely have women on the staff. Um, but in line with that, uh, do you ever find yourself uh, correcting some of the lines or uh, ad living, adding to the lines they give you to make it a little more personal or a little yeah. more feminine? Yeah, you know what? I, I never do. And that's unusual. I mean, I do, because I do a lot of comedy, there's, there tends to be a lot of flexibility in that world. And so I'm super comfortable doing that. But um, other than, I mean, honestly, I think PJ is probably the only one that really has, like, a, a, does kind of brings more improv and goofiness to the table. Um, I mean, just major shout out to the writers and Mike and Brian, but I just don't ever feel like anything needs to be changed. I love their their writing. I think they hit it, you know, hit the nail on the head every time. Yeah. That writing and your voice acting that you bring to it is actually my favorite part of course. Oh, gosh, thank, thank you. you so much. Well, on behalf of them, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Saw your hand. Uh, the Geeky Panda, uh, the Geeky Panda from the Geeky Panda blog here. When you're, that's my nickname since high school. <laughs> uh, when you're reviewing your work, like since you're a voice actress, do you ever find it? Do you ever like try to enjoy your work as you're watching it, or you're kind of like, oh, I could have done that better, could have done this better, like maybe, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, I don't particularly like watching myself on screen. Uh, I share that phobia with a lot of actors. Um, it is really, it's just hard. Um, and, and it's really easy to scrutinize. And, uh, you know, we all look at pictures of ourselves. Like, think about Facebook. You know, someone posts a picture of you and you're like, oh, they posted that one? Um, and sort of, you know, we've made this, like, crazy decision to sort of live in that place all the time. Um, so I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't love that, uh, 
there are certain things that I like watching that I can sort of look past that, and I would say that Burning Love is one of them. I can watch that, and I don't even, I'm not even, everybody else is so funny that I'm not even, I don't have time to think about, like, who should I have? But, um, but Legend of Korra is like always, I never think about my contribution to it or what I could have done differently because again, you just like get swallowed into that world in the best way. And seeing someone else who happens to have a voice that almost in my mind, it's like, she kind of sounds like me. Like that's how much I forget that I have anything to do with it because I'm such a fan of the show. Um, and that's the cool thing about animation, I think, is that you can really let go of that and just focus on like how great the work is and, and and it's kind of like being a little kid in that way. Like, I never get over the magic of, you know, oh, that's not me, but I guess it kind of is me. Yeah. We have time for two more questions. I saw your hand up. Jason Lanetsky, Cosplay and Magazine. Hey, Jason. How are you? Good, thanks. Uh, I was wondering if you have any upcoming projects besides the one you already announced. Oh, besides uh, the effect show. Um, I mean, that's kind of the biggest one. That's really been swallowing up all my time in the best way. Um, what else was I thinking? I would say that's mostly it. Um, I've been doing a bunch of like extra, like just kind of funny random characters on Sanjay and Craig on Nickelodeon, which is like the funniest. It's so funny and it's really like gives you permission to laugh at fart jokes um, till the end of time. Like I, I'm not even embarrassed of them. They're so funny. Um, so I've been working on that. Um, podcast is ongoing. I think that's. I, that's pretty much it. I'm like, so I literally just got here from shooting on You're the Worst, so that's like the only thing that's in my brain right now. I'm probably <laughs> forgetting something. But I will also give a major shout out to the Thrilling Adventure Hour, which is, um, yeah, yay! Which, uh, which I've been doing more and more stuff with because because uh, I've had more time to do that. And, um, and so I'll be with them at the San Diego Comic Con, and we're doing a, a Welcome to Night Vale Thrilling Adventure Hour crossover live show there. That'll be really fun, and panels and signings and stuff like that. And I'll be doing um, the live shows as much as I can in, in Los Angeles. That's another really, really fun thing I get to do. And one more. Uh, sorry, I wait. feel like all my questions were too, or my answers were too long, and that's why. Not at all. Have time. So, sorry sorry that. In the gray. Sorry. question I you know it's funny because the only thing that's hard about it at all to me is the technical stuff because the writing is so amazing you know because um, they just create this amazing world and because now we sort of have a sense although I never know how beautiful something's gonna be until I'm doing ADR when we get pulled in to do ADR for like the fight sequences and stuff that's the first chance I get to see any of the animation and we've recorded the episode itself such a long time ago that I I don't even really remember doing it, which is probably another reason it's so easy to watch, because like, I don't even remember it. But, um, but uh, so the technical stuff is what's, is what's tricky, because, um, you know, it's just hard to sync up, like, fight sounds and kicking sounds and all that. And that actually reminds me, speaking of upcoming stuff, I'm sure you guys already know about this, but um, one of the hardest things I've done as of late for Korra was recording the video game. And I'm so, so, so excited about the video game, and, it's, and I just went in and did some ADR for that. But doing five straight hours of like screaming and kicking and panting and all of the stuff that, that video game characters do is exhausting! I can't, the friends of mine that do like almost exclusively video game voices, I don't even know how they have like a voice to just talk when they're not doing that. So that honestly is the hardest part. Everything else is like just the best. Yeah. I'm sorry, well that concludes uh, today's press junket. Um, Janet Barney will answer all your core questions from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday, July 12th in panel room 7. Thank you all for joining us today, and thank you, Janet. Thanks.